Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level chemistry for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of periodicity, and in particular, the physical properties of the period three elements. Hi, I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level chemistry with our helpful revision resources tailored to your subject your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, please leave any comments down below about anything you're unsure of. If it's your first time watching, make sure to let us know so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the video. Welcome to lesson two of two in this tutorial covering the physical properties of the period three elements. This is our second video in our series of two lessons on the topic of periodicity. In the last lesson, we learnt about classifying elements according to their position on the periodic table. Here are the key learning objectives for today's lesson. First, we will look at the atomic radius across period three, then at the trends in melting point and fast ionisation energy across it. Here is the AQA specification point for today's lesson. We need to be able to discuss the elements from sodium to argon in terms of their structure and bonding. Let's have a recap of periods, groups and proton number. We'll cover atomic radius, melting point and ionisation energy. Let's look at the atomic radius trend. The atomic radius of an element is going to decrease as you move across a period. The proton number of the element will increase as we move across the period, meaning that the number of protons increases, giving the nucleus a positive charge. This means there is a stronger attraction between the nucleus and the electrons in the orbitals. Therefore, the electrons will be pulled inwards towards the nucleus. This will contract the radius inwards and therefore the atomic radius is going to decrease. For example, here are some of the group two elements. They all have two outer electrons. However, there are 19 protons in potassium and 20 in calcium, which means that these electrons are going to attract more strongly than these electrons. This graph shows the trend of atomic radii across period 3. The atomic radius of the elements across period 3 will decrease as the result of the nucleus becoming increasingly positively charged. There is no shielding effect across a period since the electrons are being added into the same outer electron shell of the element's atom. Now let's look at the melting point across period three. The melting point of the elements across a period will change according to their structure and bonding. Both of these have an effect on the melting point of an element as we learnt earlier on. We will now discuss the trend in melting points across period three. We're going to consider them in four separate groups, like this. What do you think happens when we go from sodium to aluminium? The melting point will increase from sodium to aluminium. Sodium, magnesium, and aluminium are all metals and therefore will have metallic bonding. As we learned earlier, the more delocalized electrons present, the smaller the radius of the atom. The higher the boiling point and melting point of the metal will be. As we move across period three, the number of delocalized electrons per metal atom is going to increase and the radius of the element will decrease. This means that the melting point will increase due to the greater electrostatic attraction 
between the positive ions and the delocalised electrons. This means that the metallic bond is stronger and requires more energy to break. Here, we can see that sodium forms plus one ions, whilst calcium forms plus two ions. This means that the calcium will have a stronger electrostatic attraction between its delocalised electrons and positive nuclei, and therefore will have a higher melting point than sodium. Do you think silicon has a high or a low melting point? Silicon has the highest melting point of all the elements in group 3. It has a macromolecular structure which is made up of strong covalent bonds. These strong covalent bonds will require a large amount of energy in order to break them. Silicon, therefore, will have a high melting point. How about phosphorus to chlorine? The melting point will increase, but sulphur has the highest melting point. Phosphorus, sulphur and chlorine are simple molecular substances which have van der Waals forces. As we learned earlier, van der Waals are weak intermolecular forces which only require a small amount of energy to break them. For this reason, the melting points of these simple molecular substances is very low. The melting point of these substances depends on the varying strength of the van der Waals forces. The stronger the forces are, the higher the melting point. The shape of a molecule and the distance between the molecules is going to affect the strength of the induced dipole-dipole forces. A larger molecule is going to contain more electrons and therefore have larger electron clouds. The greater the number of electron clouds, the stronger the induced dipole-dipole forces will be. More energy is required to break these forces and therefore the melting point will be higher. As sulphur is the largest molecule out of the three, it will contain the highest number of electrons and therefore have the strongest van der Waal forces. Therefore, it will have the highest melting point compared to phosphorus and chlorine. How about argon? This will have the lowest melting point of all the elements in period three. Argon is a noble gas and therefore has a very low melting point as it exists as a monatomic element, consisting of very weak van der Waals forces. These weak van der Waals forces only need a small amount of energy to break them, and so make argon have a low melting point. Do you think the ionisation energy increases or decreases across a period? It will increase. The first ionisation energy of an element will always increase across a period. As you move across the period, the number of protons is going to increase. And therefore, the attraction between the nucleus and the outermost electrons will also increase. More energy is therefore required to remove the outermost electron, meaning that the first ionisation energy will increase. We've now covered the learning objective for today's lesson. Feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch anything you didn't understand. We've now completed lesson two. If you liked this video, make sure to catch our latest videos by subscribing down below and leaving a comment on a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch more videos on our series of A-level chemistry or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.